Ah, oh, it's a beautiful looking house, isn't it? Speaking of houses, I went looking at houses today. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio, and welcome back to your Friday night open lines. Because um, that's that's basically what we do on Friday nights when we don't have anything else planned. We allow you, the best part of Liberty Radio, to call in and let us know what's on your mind. Uh, today, of course, is December 8th, 2023. Uh, I am the drizzle, as usual. And uh, you, out there in COVID land, probably have something on your mind. Something on your chest that you just need to get off, right? You just need to get that thing off of your chest so that you'll feel better going into the remainder of 2023 all was that 23 days of it but yeah that's what we do on friday nights uh we allow you to set the tone and the pace of the show all the way up to midnight eastern on the east coast sometimes we go a little bit over uh, we actually we have uh, the privilege of being able to do that at the moment, that may not always be true. Uh, but for the time being, we can actually do that. All right, so this is how it works. Uh, down in the description of the live stream here on Odyssey, there is a link to the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. In the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, which is public, by the way, in case you were wondering or scoring along. And uh, that link goes to a Zoom call that allows you to participate in the open lines portion of tonight's proceedings. Uh, so it's a little bit different from how you would normally do it, right? Because back in the day, radio station, they got, uh, they got the big production budget. They can get all of the latest technology together to make sure that the program's going to be as as uh, high value production wise as it pro possibly can, right? Uh, and sometimes they're just stringing things together with, uh, you know, some shoestrings and chicken wire, and uh, maybe they got like a hot plate that they're using uh, to generate heat. Uh, I don't know. Um, I never actually got to work at a real radio station, so I'm not uh, not quite sure exactly what all they have. Uh, I did intern at one for like two weeks. Um, that was a long, long time ago, though. So I'm sure things have probably changed a lot in the last one, two, three, three decades. Probably been about three decades, yeah. Wow, that's scary to think about. Uh, so anyway... It's not about what's on my mind on Friday nights. It is about what is on your mind. So hit up the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. Click on that link to the Zoom call and let us know. It's, it's literally a free-for-all, folks. There are, uh, you know, the only, the only rule that there really is on open lines is that there's not really any rules. It's just whatever you want to talk about. If you just want to uh, call in and spew a bunch of hate because nobody will let you do it anywhere else on the internet, you have found your place. It's Friday night open lines. You can say whatever you want. We don't even have to worry about the FCC breathing down our neck. That's the best part of this, y'all, is it's literally whatever you want to talk about. Whatever is on your mind, uh, whatever is grinding your gears, as uh, Peter Griffin was known to be fond of saying, that uh, that great saint of the early 21st century. But yeah, it's uh, it's all about you guys tonight. So call in and let us and the rest of the interwebs know uh, what you think is important. To be talking about and we'll talk about it because that's what it's all about 
So it looks like, all right, let's check the live stream chat. Yona, so if you guys tuned in last night, uh, you know that uh, Yona, or maybe, maybe this was after the broadcast last night. Anyway, Yona let me know last night that he probably wasn't going to be able to be around for uh, open lines, but apparently uh, he is. He says he's putting the kids to bed and he's going to jump in soon. So essentially what that means, folks, is now is your time. Because again, once the Yona gets in, uh, you're going to have to take him down like uh, Bulldog style, you know, like Davy Boy Smith style in order to be able to get a word in edgewise. So uh, if I were you, I would call in now, right? Because I, again, don't have anything prepared for tonight. I got no scripts. I got no notes. I got nothing. Because again, it's not about me. I'm just here to moderate. I'm here to establish the platform and to moderate and hopefully not fuck things up along the way. That's, that's the ideal formula uh, for Friday nights. Um, Because my mind on Fridays is usually on Saturday night and making that's making sure that that's as high quality as it can possibly be. Take a sip of my tea here. But the folks listening to the replay understand why there's a little bit of silence because I'm not going to edit it out tomorrow. All right. So as usual on a Friday night, uh, everybody is a little bit bashful out there in COVID land. I have come to uh, expect this. I have. And when I say that I have nothing planned, um, I'm actually lying because I do have a contingency Every single time, uh, in case y'all display the usual behavior, which is being bashful. So, uh, until, again, until somebody decides to, to jump on the phone lines or the high Yona uh, shows up, uh, we're going to help me get caught up on my media diet. I don't know if you guys were aware, but Ryan Christian of The Last American Vagabond and Whitney Webb of Unlimited Hangout and The Last American Vagabond, um, got together a little bit earlier this week, a couple days ago. Hasn't been very long at all. And uh, they were talking about some really interesting things from what I heard, because I haven't actually gotten a chance to check it out yet. So while we're waiting for a caller to show up, I thought we could do that to pass the time. And that way, you don't have to listen to me ramble incessantly. For the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 hours. I'm sorry, did I say hours? Yeah, that's what I said. So, uh, let's see. Let's go here. And we'll get it all set up and ready to go. And uh, as I said, looks like the Hyona will be joining us eventually. I don't know if Yona's had a chance to watch this yet or not. That might be interesting to find out. Welcome to the Daily Wrap-Up a concise show dedicated to bringing you the most relevant independent news as we see it from the last 24 hours. Wednesday, December 6, 2023. Thank you for joining me today. We have a special guest joining Whitney Webb here to discuss her long-term investigation into the CTI League and interesting developments in right, this try year, Hold actually up. recently discussed this month in regard to how this may Nope, Over, basically, as I read into it in her discussions, how this may be played into the false flag conversation, obviously not how they're presenting it, but the risk that we've discussed about how the involvement of the U.S. government and the other these NGOs, different groups in regard to keeping you safe and the access to the very things they claim they're defending against foreign adversaries opens the door to possible 
surreptitious false flag type actions. A lot of people don't even think this is something we should be discussing, but obviously, historically, it's very relevant. So Whitney's joining today to discuss this excellent research. We're going to and talk Ryan's about Javier Malai, if I'm saying his last name correctly, something I haven't touched on yet, but I'm interested to talk about. And a lot of other things we may get into regarding Israel, Gaza, and anywhere else we decide to go with it. But it's always good to have Whitney on the show. How are you? Nice to see you this morning. Hey, well, it's nice to be back on t That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Thanks I'm sure everybody me, misses Ryan. you. So it, it's uh, yeah. it's it's really nice to see you. And, well, just a- out of the gate, you know, how are you? What's going on? How's your family? I'm sure everyone's very interested to hear. Yeah, well, you know, I'm okay, all things considered. Um, you know, uh, for people that don't know, I mean, I haven't really been working much this year because my son has been in and out of the hospital and was there for like, I don't know, like four months. And we've had to go back almost every week. Uh, since he got out in like mid-September and now we're going like every two-ish weeks plus yeah. doctors. Of, I don't know. It's, it eats up a lot of time, but he's yeah. doing mostly better. I mean, he's at home and running around doing kid stuff, but yeah. you know, it's, it's not totally resolved and I don't know, hopefully we'll be sometime soon, but you know, trying to get back to work as much as I feasibly can uh, with, with that situation. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on. So, I mean, hard yeah. to not want to jump in and do stuff, you know? Yeah, it's a, definitely a dangerous and, you know, it's a hard time to deal with hospital stuff for anybody, it, right? So it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sure everyone, everyone's just very, very always asking about you, always wondering everything's okay. So a lot of love out there for you and your family. So if that's, oh, you know, thanks. Elaine, that. Oh, we appreciate that. Thank you. So let, we're going to talk to we're going to start right out of the gate today. I've got I've got a, a few different things I wanted to get into in the latter half of the show regarding Israel and and some alarming developments in regard to po- flooding tunnels and some hostage overlap and some things that I think would really interesting to get your takes on, you know, sure. just, maybe even just a female yeah. perspective. But let's mm-hmm. start today with the discussion of the CTI League itself the Cyber Threat Intelligence League, and something we've talked yeah. about in the past, our 2020 coverage, different things you've worked on for a long time, and how mm-hmm. this, in my in my eyes, seems to tie very, right now, the discussion of how Iran plays in with what's going on to Gaza, if that's even something that's other than just supporting them ideologically or just because they're their plight, whether that's something that's really happening is debatable, but that all of a yeah. sudden we see all these allegations, you know, Ron, this is building, the threat's coming, they're, they're seeing alarm si- signals everywhere, I can play that clip for you, sort of like the clip that I wasn't able to find today of that one we played before. We see it building and we just don't yeah. know how to stop it. It's like the next evolution. Yeah, Christopher Ray just a few days ago, had a moment just like that. Where he was yeah, basically well, saying it. the same that's, thing. Yeah, that's the same one. Uh, let me grab it real quick, and I'll play that because th- it's it's really interesting how you know it's kind of the same the recycling of the same things, you know. Over totally I had it downloaded. So go go give, go ahead, really grab that real quick and give me the back. Give them the background to what Christopher Ray was saying, and I'll, I'll grab that real quick. Um, <clears throat> well, I I can't remember exactly, but to paraphrase, it was something like all our indicators for terrorism, whatever, are all going off at the same time, and it's never been like this, you know, something like that. Right, right, exactly. Um, well, it, it's just exactly the same thing as before, like the hype. Yeah, that- and the thing before that you're talking about is uh, this ex, well, now ex, but at the time, DHS lady Elizabeth Newman, right. who was foreshadowing what would later become january 6th saying oh these anti-semitic trump supporters oh we see them building up something and we know it's coming just like another 9-11 and we can't quite stop it meaning we're going to allow it to happen or create it (laughs) um which is the same model that happened with what like 9-11 and more recently october 7th with israel yeah and what's even more interesting is how currently and it's not always all, all or nothing, but the largest block out of the left-right paradigm that seems to be supporting Israel blindly is that same group. <laughs> so it's like they're the most anti-Semitic you group. Know. Gonna, you know, it's this. It just shows you the illusion around it all. And he, here is the <laughs> clip that we, uh, that Christopher Ray saying this. So what I would say that is unique about the environment that we're in right now in my career is that while there may have been times over the years where individual threats could have been higher here or there than where they might be right now, I've never seen a time where all the threats, or so many of the threats, are all elevated all at exactly the same time. That's what makes this environment that we're in now so fraught and why funding our men and women who are working shoulder to shoulder with state and local law enforcement and other partners every day makes it even more important, not less. So 
blinking yeah. red lights analogy about 9-11. All the lights were blinking red before 9-11. They literally say it. All of us missed it. Right. Would yeah. you say that there's multiple <laughs> blinking red lights out there? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. It's just, it's like the, you know, the, the destruction clock. We're now at mid 11, five to midnight. It's just like this ridiculous analogy that doesn't really yeah. have any meaning, you know, it, it's so strange. Good. You have so the U S you know, Ryan, you and I have talked about for a long time now, how the U S is very clearly due for nine 11, 2.0. Mm -hmm. And that based on your and my research over the past several years, the nine 11, 2.0 is going to be a mix of, uh, the war on domestic terror agenda, uh, oh. plus all the cyber stuff. Because it doesn't have to be like, you know, buildings being controlled demolitioned on live TV with people yeah. in them right. this well, time. So it doesn't mean it's going to be the same attack, but the same scale. Um, and, you know, it, they know it's going to happen before it happens. I mean, I don't know. That foreshadowing is crazy because yeah. he like says, you know, Christopher well, Ray says it and then whatever point. senator or Graham. congressman Lindsay is Graham. asking him is, is literally. Yeah, it's at this point with computer generated imagery being as high definition as it is right now uh, they can literally just create any event that they want uh, they can they can have real human actors you know playing out the the roles and the dialogue and all of that stuff and everything that's happening around that because again it, they did that with the Star Wars movies hell that was 15 years ago, they were doing that shit. So it doesn't even have to be an actual genuine event anymore. It can be completely staged. Like to the point that even the people that are participating in it, you know, they probably know that it's staged and they're going to have to be paid off for, you know, kept silent in, in some way. Right. Really just like, so, uh, like, just setting it up to be like, so you're saying another 9-11 equivalent is coming. Yeah. And he's like, everywhere I turn, that's what I see. I mean, it's just like, it couldn't be more in your face. Would, um, you, would you not argue that COVID-19 could have been that role itself? Like the, like the you know, the next 9-11 uh, 2.0 well, kind of yeah. scenario? Well, yeah. So, yeah. So, yes, but COVID-19 was a global thing, right? So, I mm. mean, you have a lot yeah. of different things that the global elite want to accomplish. But when we're talking just about the mm. U.S. specifically, the U.S. needs some sort of specific thing that pushes it into the next phase. That's a party foul on me. Uh, I forgot to unmute my mic before I paused the video. Uh, Y'all let me know how how bad I should feel about that uh, down in the comments. And uh, I'll take it under advisement. You know, I'm always willing to listen uh, to what folks have to say. And, uh, you know... You remember earlier when I was telling you that once Yona gets on the call, like you're, everybody else is going to be pretty much done as far as trying to get a word in edgewise. That time has come. You had your chance, folks. <laughs> you had your chance. You should have taken advantage of it while it was available. Because now it's like running the gauntlet. Welcome, Yona. Let there be light. Yeah. And audio. All right. So I guess this thing is working and I don't have the. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Sounds, we're good. Sounds better than my end, actually. So how wow. is your, uh, how's your Friday been? Very fried. Nice. And about to be even more fried. Fuck yeah. Shout out to the plug. Spark it up. Just about to do the same thing myself. So I'm guessing you didn't, you haven't seen this interview yet either, right? No, I was, I was checking it out. I, I know that Whitney was on with Riot earlier. I've just been hustling hard this week. And as soon as the show's over, my drizzle break time will be over and it'll be 
Back to the blacktop, bitch. Damn. That's right. Oh. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do good tonight. Yeah, it's Friday night. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Friday night in December. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, it'll and actually it's... be... I'll be interested to find out. Uh, we'll probably have to talk about it next week, right? But I'll be interested to find out, like, how many of the people you encounter are imbued with the Christmas spirit. Like, truly. Not just, not the fake uh, vulture signaling shit that people usually do at holiday time, right? But, like, actually, really the Christmas spirit. There's, like, just an unreal amount of fucking Christmas life put up in Ironton and Ashland and Huntington. They really, really, really go all out with fantasy time. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people I've been seeing sporting the ugly Christmas sweaters and everything. The, the Yuletide spirit is most definitely in the air. Um, Although, um, you know, I, I just, I can't help but think, you know, I, I, I keep, you know, like, I just keep imagining that it's only a matter of time before we have green lockdowns for the climate. And so right. knowing what's coming down the pike kind of makes me feel bad when I'm sitting at a red light at three o'clock in the morning driving 15 miles from the 7-Eleven just to deliver a huge bag that only has one item inside of it, sour apple gushers. Um, because Seriously? People will use DoorDash to order not snacks, plural, but just, just a snack. A snack. And when I mean a snack, I mean like literally like <clears throat> uh, one just wanted a fucking Reese's peanut butter cup delivered. And of course there were two in the package. Right. So, right. So how, how does that work? Like what's the delivery fee on like a candy bar? Well, now that's the thing you see. How much are they charging for the candy bar? It can't be like shelf price. It's gotta be more than that. Right. Um, Typically, the DoorDash, minimum DoorDash, is only about two or two and a half dollars. What? Um, that's so all. I can be like, speed. you know, go get me, go get me a fucking uh, cup of coffee over at the Starbucks and and bring it to my lazy ass. Yeah, and it's two and a half bucks any any time of day or night. That now, of course. Uh, most DoorDash drivers, including myself, when you see an order that comes up that's the minimum two fifty or two seventy five or just three bucks or whatever, I ain't taking it. Decline. Nope, not doing it because because you know it's not worth your money. I mean, well, do no, you really want to work? It. Do you really want to work for negative money? Because at that point, you're literally it's going to cost you more in gas than you're even being paid back. Well, yeah, especially if you're in, like, California or someplace. Jesus. But when you get stoners at 3 o'clock in the morning that really want a Reese's Cup, how bad do you fucking want it? And some of, them, some of them want it really bad, and that's how I get... I'm like, you know, I literally, last night, I took a single order of fucking Gushers candy. A box of, you know, Gushers. You know what gushers are? Airheads, you know. Um, one box of fucking candy paid 20 bucks. You're fucking kidding me. They really, but now, granted, you know, there were two Lexuses and a Range Rover in the driveway and it was a fancy house. And, you know, I mean, you know, when it's mom and dad's money, who gives a fuck, right? I, I guess. I, well, yeah. Yeah. When it's mom and dad's money. It just fuck it, you know, yeah. Whatever you want to do, man. I mean, you know, you got rich kids doing drugs at three o'clock in the middle of the night, and they want snacks brought to them. And enter the Yona. There you go. Hmm. 
Wow. That's crazy. I mean, I, I suppose that, I don't know, my, my uh, incredulity is stemming from, like, my own unwillingness to pay extra. Right. Or something like that, right? Like, if, uh, if it's me same. and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and I've got an attack of the munchies and I've got nothing to, to sate that appetite with, Ooh. I'm going without, dude. You know? Like, oh, I'm just rough, I'm man. just going to grit my teeth and and I guess I'll survive. I don't know. Come on, Drizzle. You only live once. Dig in pocket. Uh, How much no, is it I'm good, worth man. It? I'm good. How much is it worth to you? <laughs> Let's see. Let's try this. <laughs> the funniest works. thing was um I guess it was about three or four nights ago. Uh, and it, it says fucking snack run. And, and this this one, I mean, the bag was weighed down. He had a fucking, had like eight items on it. It was like a Milky Way and a Babe Ruth and a whatchamacallit and a 100 grand and a fucking Hershey's bar and fucking bag of Funyuns and a bag of Cheeto. You know, like, God damn, this dude went all out. So I like the bag of Funyuns. That's good. And and he's like, uh, put the order in my hand. Don't just leave it at the door. Hmm. So I get up to the door and I knock on the door. And no answer. Of course. Send text messages. No response. Finally break down and call the phone number. No answer. God damn, man. It's almost 420 in the morning. And this motherfucker said, put it in my hand, and now I ain't answering or nothing. Right. He's so, going to come find my ass. So I just leave it on the porch, and I go down, and I hit my pipe a couple times. And all of a sudden, dude comes out on the porch, and he's like, bro, where's my stuff? And, and I come out, and I'm like, hey, it's right there in front of your feet. And he's like, whoa. Whoa, I, that smells good. Wow, your, your shit smells better than mine. Hey, you got any extra? I, I was like, there's your food, man. I, I'm out of here. Man. No. No, I, I I don't share funk weed with people that smoke mids and bridges. Ew. It's a, you know, I went up on the port. I could smell fucking So what you're standards. saying is you have standards. Yeah, man. Principalities and shit. It's like the dude that jumps in the rotation with the fucking herpes lips. Hmm. Don't pass it to fuck. What are you doing? Don't pass it to herpes lips. He obviously just got done wolfing down some episode herpes corn. And and for those that watch AM Wake Up, they'll know. Yeah. Chris Rank has been filling you in about this fucking herpes the corn. Herpes and- corn, yeah. And the and, uh, fucking and, and uh, Project Pogo, Pogo, Operation Pogo, whatever the fuck that is. That's right. That's some crazy ass shit. That's like stuff that I talk about in shit. You know, speaking of corn. Uh-oh. My word. I, I, I took the direct route. Because I looked at the map, you know, I was like, what's the shortest possible distance that I could possibly drive? on roadways, be they gravel or blacktop, to get from point A to point B. Because yeah, I know there's four lanes and interstates, and I can go way the fuck over here and then double back 40 miles. It's almost the same amount of time, but I'm trying to save on gas. So I found a route that cut the distance from 94 miles down to 68 miles. Hell of a shortcut. It's almost a direct V line. Sounds like it. But most, you know, I mean, there was even three or four stretches of gravel road on it. But what a fucking awesome cross country country drive. Uh, and literally just cornfield after cornfield. I'm mean, fucking farms and livestock as far as the act. And then I was like, what was that one place called? Wilkesville? I think 
Wilkesville, Ohio. Um, huge Amish community. And, you know, I got behind uh, Amish buggies with horses two or three different times. Um, my plan tomorrow uh, is to cross the river by boat. And I'm going to make a special video for the uh, Grand Theft World Liberty Radio manufacturing reality stuff there we do. What do we call it? The Gonzo Journalism. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. Yona crosses the Ohio from the uh, non-weeds to the weeds. From the non-weeds shore to the weeds shore. Um, because, uh, yeah, I, I know that I've mentioned several times fairies and it's not like people normally are driving their vehicles on to fucking boats to cross rivers around here not anymore not anymore used to happen but that, a lot but that's still a thing in kentucky and west virginia still a thing in new york too i believe I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I've yeah. never been to New York City. I have no desire to go, but I know. Yeah, they do have thing. some auto ferries to Staten Island and across Long Island Sound. That is true. That is a fact. Um, but they are like super duper monster like ship ferries, you know, that are like holding, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 cars. I don't, I don't know how many passengers will fit on those ferry boats in new york mm -hmm. um uh the thing i'll be on tomorrow i think holds a maximum of four vehicles so it's uh, small yeah it's, it's real it's small. big it's bigger than a car obviously but it's small for a boat yeah it, it's it's basically like a barge with a towboat on the side kind of like thing except that towboat is attached to the barge on like um uh, a hinge because it has to go one way to cross the river and then it will uh like unlock and then swing around to where now it's facing the other way to push the boat back across the other side of the river and of course, since it's the Ohio River, which is one of the most heavily trafficked navigable waterways in all of North America, it's not a cable guided ferry. It has to be a free boat ferry, which means he so pulls off boaters. to the shore. He pulls off the shore, and we're just fucking free falling it to try to line up to get to the other side. Yeah, buddy. Um, unlike That's White's do it. ferry. You know, there's White's Ferry, which is uh, uh, over, connects Maryland to Virginia there. Yes. Uh, White's Ferry is just outside of Leesburg, Virginia. Yeah. And uh, Fletch wrote a song about it. Uh-huh. And the White's Ferry, actually, I don't even know if it's still operating. It had been operating for so long, but I think it actually got shut down for some stupid reason. Um, I'm not sure if it's operating out, but that one was a fixed cable guided ferry, hmm. you know, with, with four wires going from all four corners of the ferry boat. Uh, and, you know, you got two pulleys on each of the wires on each side going to these big guide wires that hang over top. Oh, my God. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Of course. Hey, dude, you got smoke? Uh, <laughs> nope. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I saw Jimmy Dore's example and I thought, fuck it. Why not? Eh. <laughs> Psych. What's the worst thing that could happen? Uh, nah, I'm about to run out myself. I got a board of. I got to find a way to re-up because apparently uh, I'm not naming any names here, not trying to get anybody hurt or anything, but apparently 
where I the where the last stuff was acquired from is no longer an option because he's in Pokey. So that's uh, awesome. That's fucking great, ain't it? Boop, 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 yeah. uh, combo. So back to square one. Right back to where I started. Yeah. Fuck that and shit. There- there's apparently there's been weed all- around. I'll find it eventually. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take. There's all kinds of uh, moving and shaking that's been going on with the Ohio marijuana law. Uh, and it was just an absolute flurry and whirlwind the other day. Yeah. On uh, all the way up till 11.59, one minute before midnight yeah. on the evening of the 6th. Yeah, we covered it last night. Uh, and I heard even more about it again today from a guy who was telling me that, oh, well, they, they said that the dispensaries have to immediately start selling it. I, I guess I did mention some of that last night. But yeah. I'm still like, well, how the fuck would they just snap a finger? And you, No, I... Nothing happens instantly with government. <laughs> and it, if it, it seems like it's happening instantly to us, that's because they had already been working on it for <laughs> years in advance. Well, <clears throat> kind of yes, kind of no. It also depends with the language that was used on the ballot initiative. Because if if it specifically stated shall become uh you know uh, effective in X amount of days, mm-hmm. thirty days. I, that's that's technically that's legally binding because it was done through the democratic process. The people had their say on it, and we know what the result of that was. That's like simple. That's easy stuff. It amazes me that the politicians in Ohio would be dumb enough to not, you know, uh, have have more opportunity to subdivide that the pieces of that pie, right? Like they're like, oh shit, we got a whole fucking brand new industry that's about to come into Ohio. We gotta fucking get our part of that. Okay. So let's see here. One day ago, the Ohio Senate has approved changes to the recreational marijuana bill as the issue to now takes effect. (laughs) So what do we have here? This is from WLWT, I think. Yeah. WLWT Channel 5, Cincinnati, not to be confused with WKRP, which is also in Cincinnati. Correct. Uh, Well, WKRP was a radio station. That's right. So, let's see here. Columbus, Ohio, December 7th, 2023. So, this was written yesterday. Uh, the Ohio State Senate has approved several changes to the recreational marijuana law set to go into effect Thursday. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine and Evil Keebler Elf is urging passage of the bill. The announcement comes just hours before a special ad pops into the middle of that paragraph I was reading. Yeah, and now that's the it's format. halfway over it. That's nice. Custom the announcement time. comes hours before issue two, which legalizes recreational marijuana in the state, which passed in November. The ballot measure dubbed issue two passed on the November eleventh. November eleventh. The ballot measure dubbed issue two passed on the November seventh election with fifty-seven percent of the vote. And it's set to become law this Thursday. Thursday came and went. That was yesterday. Making Ohio the 24th state 
to legalize marijuana for adult recreational use. But as a citizen-initiated statute, the legislature is free to make tweaks on it, of which they're attempting plenty. There you go. I, I love knew, the way I they... knew there was going to be something. <laughs> I knew it. Tweets. Can can yeah. can we can we tweak with your drug bill a little bit? No. What they're going to do is they're going to start imposing regulations, right? Because that's what government does. That is the function of government is to stick its nose in places that it shouldn't be. So that's called regulation. So Mike Dewine said. Home grow is back in the bill, but it will be limited to just six plants per home, as opposed to the original 12 Why? in the ballot initiative that was passed. And oh. they didn't want to allow any home growing. Why are those magic numbers? <clears throat> why, why could it only be six or 12? Why is it not eight? Why is it not 42? Why is it not 27? 156. Well, well, for them, the whole issue was, well, it, it, it comes down to licensure because they're saying if you're going to grow more than a certain number of plants, then you should have a commercial grower's license. You're obviously growing way more than you would ever smoke just for your own personal consumption is the rationale. I, don't judge government me. Government regulation, fucking don't, it up. Don't know. Don't e you don't know how much I can consume. You don't know how much I need. If I if I grow 48 plants for medicinal use because that's the dosage that I require to be a functional member of society, fuck you for trying to tell me that I that I should do just the same wow. with less. Ohio was attempting to restrict the THC content limit to any See, marijuana yeah, exactly. sold in the in Ohio yeah. to only five percent. That's right. But just like your beer. But the THC content limit will return to the original issue two level that was approved by voters at thirty five percent. Well, that means they're not going to be selling flour then. That's going to be like edibles and waxes and. That's well, now, I've only once ever seen any strain that was stronger than 35%. Ever. Well, what was that? Uh, I think it was 41%, and it was White Runs from Amsterdam. Hmm. And it, it was, I mean, one hit, I passed out and slept for eight hours, so it was a waste. It was too much. <laughs> you know, I mean, that would Sounds be like, like going out. Just right. Going out to drink with friends and you take one shot and boom, you're instantly blackout drunk. Are you kidding? Yeah, well, fuck. <laughs> maybe yeah, not fuck blackout that. drunk, but yeah. Uh, hey, you would be, you would be a popular date. That's what you would be. Dude, everybody would be calling you to go out. Be like, no, I got it. I got it covered. Don't worry about it. Okay. Lawmakers also wanted to start immediate sales at medical dispensaries starting this Thursday. <laughs> the Senate's proposal also would increase the approved tax on marijuana products of 10% up to 15% but remove the 15% extra tax on cultivators. Uh, Devon, uh, Mike DeWine said without the bill, Ohioans would still be able to legally possess marijuana, but there will be no place to legally buy it. The governor said the bill would also make it so children can be exposed to marijuana smoke in any public place. The bill would implement a public smoking ban. DeWine said that with enactment of the bill, it would speed up the time frame to when adults will be able to purchase legal marijuana legally, speed up the process of enacting regulations, and provide wait, 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 a permanent a source of So there's still, there's still going to be illegal marijuana? 
because he, he oh. specifically said you'll still be able to get legal marijuana. DeWine which would said imply with, that there is illegal marijuana inherent in that statement. Well, so eventually adults will be able to purchase legal marijuana legally. Right. So right. I guess right. you, you could purchase illegal marijuana legally. Or and you, you could, could purchase, purchase legal marijuana illegally. Or you could purchase illegal marijuana illegally. That's what I recommend. That's yeah. As far as I can I tell, would. that's the best way to go. That's that's I've really tried it, a it bunch is. of different ways, and that one has always worked out the best. Do, yeah. do you want to smoke a bunch of corporate fucking chemical weed? Fuck, Fuck no, Fuck no. That. You want a bunch of fucking glyphosate on your buds? I I would imagine it going into your lungs, right? As like the the chemical, uh, uh, uh whatever. This is really Paper. good. What what a great ending to this story. DeWine is urging both the House and the Senate to pass the bill and send it to his desk so he can sign it into law. There's been a lot of fighting over this bill. I think it's time that we just pass the peace pipe and get this out of the chamber. We all agreed we wanted to find a sweet spot, DeWine said. Really? Who wrote really? that? Really? That was bad. That was the really bad. Rushed to approve the new regulations and restrictions. It's like not clear if, if when the House that, will vote. If he just pulled that out of his ass on just on the spur of the moment, like, what the fuck was he thinking? And that was written by Emily Sanderson of the Associated Press and handed down to this affiliate in Cincinnati. Uh, so the Senate voted on it and it passed, but the House has not voted on it and it's not even clear when the House would vote on it. Is the House currently in session? Yeah. Because they're not on Christmas be. break yet. Yeah. Yeah. They're not on Christmas break. Yeah, yeah, it's usually about a week. Not till next Thursday. Ten days before Christmas, yeah. Yeah, they only work ha like half a month in December. And usually January, they work a half a month. Now, the Ohio legislature... February, Legend, March, April. They do go... They Most months, they about, only work about half a month. I've noticed Matter just of fact, about I think every, all months. About every year for the last... Three, well, three of the last five years running now, if my memory serves me correct, the Ohio legislature has had special sessions, snap sessions announced where they meet and pass special bills and stuff um, between December the 28th and January the 1st, you know, because... That's when everyone is really paying attention to, you know, bill making and stuff. How much shit has been crammed through the federal system and the state systems when it comes to statutes and laws? How much evil shit do they fucking shove through every year between Christmas Day and New Year's? Oh. All of it. Oh my God. All of it's evil. It's, it's, uh, yeah, but I'm like, uh, Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. That was the December 29th bill. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, <laughs> uh, Keep it under the radar. The whatever... Uh, it, what was it? Whatever it was that created the... Uh, I think it was Federal Reserve. It's Federal Reserve or IRS. One of those two. I think it was Federal Reserve. Was done like on Christmas Eve. It, when only like three people were present in the chamber. Like it was totally not legit at all. Maybe it was the IRS. I can't remember. It was one of those two. That's the problem. Neither one deserves to exist. They should both be burnt to the ground tomorrow. You know, speaking of burning to the ground, you know, I, I can't help but think way back when uh, this ugly 
man looking woman called Janet fucking Reno hmm. was the United States the OG trans general. Yeah. Um and you know the first uh bit of Janet drama Reno begot Rachel Levine involved, begot uh you know the very first controversy with Janet Reno was about the Cuban child named Elian Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and there was a bit of a was custodial thing, man. back and forth between the... Uh, that was a big the, current thing, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, because... I wonder where they got that kid place. from. Was he central casting, or did they just, like, go and, and tap somebody out of a village? Well, it, it was in Miami. Uh, and it was during the time when um, Epstein was kid-fucking right in Miami. Which, to be fair, that lasted for what, 15, 20 years? Um, 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. But um, after that, you had the, um, what did they call themselves? I think it was the uh, Branch Davidians or something. Mm-hmm. David Koresh, the, the Waco, Texas. Yeah. That was 93. Um, um, yeah, 1993. And the thing about it is, as it happened, and you had, you know, your Tom Brokaws and your Peter Jennings anchorman um, shepherding through narrative, Waco was the very first major news story event type thing where I can remember going to church and going to school and hearing teachers and and even in the sermon, um, Mm. vociferous disagreement with the official government line, Mm. because at, at the, you know, at, at, at the church, they were, um, uh, at, at the church, they, they were giving them down the road for, you know, basically just burning those people. They, they killed all those people. And, you know, and I mean, that's what the shop, the industrial art teacher was saying at LaRue County High School. You know, they, they just killed those people. Government killed those people. I mean, and I mean, that, that was, that was, that was pretty wild shit to hear in yeah. well, 1993. They, they wanted true. everyone to see that. Yeah. That, that was not hidden from the public's view whatsoever. It was very specifically shown to the public and to the widest possible audience to send a message. Don't get out of line. This is what can happen. Like, I'm sending a uh, trying to send a message here because I'm getting message after message after message that bro, I'm broadcasting here, man. Kind of busy. That's funny. Is it anyone that that we've met? Yes, he he popped in camera once before. Oh wow. <laughs> anyway, where so are we? the Ohio Senate has made their changes in a race and a scramble. Literally, like, oh my God, it's about to fucking become law, and we didn't even have a chance to fuck with it. Hurry, 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 quick, do something. And then that that was what that three day flurry of legislation was. And ultimately, I guess. Cooler heads prevailed because they were talking some pretty draconian shit of just completely repealing it all together. And I'm like, well, they can do that. Yeah. They, well, their- I, they believe that they can. See, here's the thing. Uh, I don't think they can. No, but they would do it anyway. Well, yeah, they would because they would do the whole lawfare thing, right? Where they would be like, well, 
we're just going to go ahead and do it. We'll let the courts decide. We'll do our yeah. part. Yeah. Piss yeah, that's pretty off. much the same route that uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham has pulled in Albuquerque. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I got an injunction. Yeah. So I'm changing my emergency order to just around a thousand feet of schools and playgrounds. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Because didn't she and, just and, recently and the court said you it? can't do that for anything. And so, well, I modified my order. Yeah. I did not repeal it. Just completely snubbing her. I mean, she totally went Andrew Jackson with the court. She totally snubbed the court. Fuck you. How are you going to enforce that? And, and, and the funny well, thing, the thing is, is I, I she's telling the, the court wasn't going to enforce it. How are you going to enforce this injunction when all of the New Mexico County sheriffs are like, we're not enforcing this. Right. It's unconstitutional. Right. I don't know how you do that. I just. I don't know when it happened. I guess it was a gradual process. But. To me. This idealism of American democracy could only even possibly exist if you went back to something akin to the Articles of Confederation, where you had free, separate, sovereign states that are merely allied with one another in terms of a Republican form of government. But not every single state is merely a wholly owned subsidiary and subservient to uh an ever gargantuan and growing fucking federal government that lords over every state, every county, every parish, every township, every precinct with fucking carrot and the stick, mainly the stick. Well, the problem is the, the state and even to many local level uh, government institutions and whatever uh, the ones that are important enough have themselves already been compromised. So even if you were to take out the top level of the centralized control, i.e. the federal government, just like dissolve that shit, and make it go away tomorrow, which we can do, uh, fellow Americans. We, it's Call in the Constitution. Convention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's in the Constitution. If that all goes away, and you, and then you're reverting to basically the state being at the top now, taking filling in that void. Well, that shit's already compromised. You know, fucking Chicago is compromised. New York City is compromised. L.A., Dallas, I'm sure. Detroit, definitely. Philadelphia, compromised. Miami, compromised. Seattle. Well, you, the, the, the issue becomes when you separate the idealism and the mythology and the revisionist history from the ugly reality. And, and this is where we get back. Our Denver is definitely moment. compromised. The United States of America is a settler colonial project and has been from the beginning. and. I guess that's that's one, you know, uh, special shout out to David. Whose Knight, project? All the friends. Um, oh, Whose it, project? It's, a, it's a Anglo-American project. The Anglo-American Empire. Shout out Carol Quickly. But, um, so like David, round tables and shit. Knights Templar. Uh, uh, there are ruling royal bloodline elites. Correct. There are. Very much so. Despite what the Rothschilds are paying fucking news people to say these days. Oh, they're, they're nothing. No, oh, they ain't got no power today. <laughs> yeah. Rockefellers ain't got no power in either. That's no. all conspiracy theories. Oh, you ever seen whatever, that dude? Rothschild castle? 
it's a, it's a nice looking castle from the outside. I've only ever seen it from the outside because it's somewhere in Europe. But it was interesting though because the point being. I agree with David Knight, like on 99.9% of everything that he said. But for yeah. some reason, David Knight is really getting hung up on the terminology settler colonialism. And he said that people want to apply that term to the United States of America, that it's settler colonialism, just like the Zionists doing settler colonialism in Palestine. And it's not the same thing at all. It's not settler colonialism in America anymore. Everyone's Americans now. Um, and that just didn't happen. I, I, I don't know how to make sense of it. Hmm. I really don't know how to make sense of it because of course the United States of America is a settler colonial project. Of course it is. I mean, there, it, it was a, maybe an amalgam of different projects at the outset, but it got co-opted and turned into what they wanted it to be. But, you know, I mean, I, you know, obviously in the beginning, you had the London Land Company, the Bristol Land Company, the Mayflower Party and the right. Town Party, and different people came for different reasons. The French Huguenots, the Maryland Catholic, you know. But long and the short of it is, yeah, they're all fucking colonists. And settlers, and they just came in and fucking genocided and occupied and took shit. Um, now, I mean, that's a rather general take on it, but I mean, well, the ruling class did, because I, I th if if all of that stuff is accurate, right? If we can if we can believe that history of the new world being colonized by you know the old world, Britain and Europe, and all that, if that's all legit. I don't think it was probably that much different to what we have going on today, which is you have the rank and file who are taking care of most of the manual labor of the day. You know, the shit that like all the, all the people in the other part of, of the, the species, you know, we call them the elite, the, the ruling class, the nobility, what the fuck ever. Because they always the have to, yeah, they always have to, that's the thing. They always separate themselves from the rest of the flock. Like, and they do it demonstrably because they think they're better than everybody else. Right. Well, the thing I think it's about always it been that way. I don't, I don't think like the rank and file people that were coming over to like settle colonies necessarily were doing it to, to rape and plunder, you know? Well, the, the issue is this. When, when it began, when Columbus first came over, he came over to find more slaves. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria were three slave ships that had yeah, I've heard that shackles in the yeah. below decks. And the only reason that the king and queen of Spain gave these three ships to a fucking Genovese dude that's not even from Spain, wasn't born in Spain, wasn't Genovese? a subject of Spain, as in from Genoa. Genovese? Columbus, yeah, or, or Genovese, or Genovese. Okay. Um, He, he was a Genoan. Um, Genoa, 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 what I mean. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the only reason that they gave him those three slave ships is because Columbus was able to demonstrate with his curriculum vitae resume that, hey, I, I've been hauling slaves back and forth from North Africa to Spain for 25 fucking years. I know what I'm doing. Trust me on this. And so with that, La Conquista began in the New World with them landing on the shores and just snatching, kidnapping human beings mm -hmm. wherever they could find them to, immediate, to enslave them uh, and work them to death, mining gold or, or whatever. Uh, and the Spanish uh, began to establish brutal plantations in the Dominican Republic and Haiti and Cuba, from modern day, uh, the Caribbean. Um, when the uh, Mayflower Party landed at Plymouth, um, William Bradford established 
a, um, let's see, what did William Bradford call their settlement at Plymouth? Um, right, of Plymouth plan fucking tation. Yes, mm. Plymouth was a plantation. Yeah. Rhode Island and Providence Plantation. That's literally the legal name of that state. Providence Plantation. Jamestown. Yep. Jamestown was a plantation. plantation. Yeah. Yeah. Plantation. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, the initial English speaking colonies, yeah. which are the foundation of the United States of America, every single one of them up and down the coast were all brutal plantation correct because a strict social caste order yeah and at the very bottom of the human order were the irish slaves uh and then beneath them is what was considered the subhuman order which would be you know your engines and your africans right your your higher melanated yeah. Humans. The dark. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I remember going through a government indoctrination center, right? We had to do 12 years of that, 13 years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to, like, by law, or your parents would go to jail or some shit. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, be a truant. Right. Um, I remember the best year downhill from there. I remember that they told us, because I was out, you were born in the state of Virginia. Right, Yona? I was born in the state of Virginia, too. And I remember sitting in government school and being told that the state of Virginia got its name from uh, one of the queens of England. Queen Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen. Right. And lo and behold, it wasn't until many, many years later, after I was long already out of government school, uh, that I learned that that was uh, fucking bullshit. It was actually named after the business that settled the area, which was the Virginia Company. Which was named in honor of the Virgin Queen. Right. They just left out that that one little part. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the... Let's see. The London Land Company got their charter and they called, they named their, they named their colony, the Virginia colony, Mm -hmm. but it was actually the London land company. Um, And then the Mayflower was chartered for the Brownists and the Puritans there. Uh, And their party, they were the Bristol land company. You had the London Land Company and the Bristol Land Company because they they were royal chartered land companies allowed to go charter lands, new lands in the name of the king and God. Um, and so the bedrock foundational colonies that formed the very basis of the United States of America today in all of its English speaking glory is Roanoke Plantation. Hmm. That one didn't do so well. Jamestown Plantation, Plymouth Plantation, and Providence Plantation. And then you had the other plant like the St. Augustine Plantation of Ponce de Leon. Plantations up and down the coast. Now, it's not like I mean this is in that day and age, you didn't have plantation slavery all over France, all over Germany, all over no, Spain. No, you had war. So you had war going on in those places. Right, but but my, my point is when it came to building new civilization in the new world. They opted to do something different. Rather than replicating precisely the very civilization that they were living in, in Europe, instead they decided to experiment with just 
constant fucking genocide and fascism in North America. Hmm. And it's never ended. It's well, just I mean, been constant that fucking works, killing you know, you and fascism. Uh, right. And, you know, hence the need for the K through 12 indoctrination period and yeah. just the constant, constant, constant lying. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's no wonder why I'm so warped <laughs> because when my older sisters were watching television, I was going out in the woods and reading the macropedia and micropedia of the entire fucking Encyclopedia Britannica set. You know, well, um, during kindergarten, well, before kindergarten, then, because um, I finished, uh, actually, it was the World Book Encyclopedia set that I finished at the end of kindergarten. And, and over the summer, is when my dad bought me uh, my own brand new Encyclopedia Britannica set, which that was a 1980 oh. version, a 1980 Britannica full set, which was like, I gotta say, like 35 volumes or something. Damn. And it took me That's almost serious. a year. It took me almost a year to read all those books. Um, and I just I would just go out in the woods and just sit there quietly in nature and read and read and read. And so that's why by the time I got into <coughs> um, third grade, everyone had, like I kept having to meet with the principal and stuff uh, and the guidance counselor. And they ended up sending me off to college after elementary school. And I started taking college classes because. Yona was just so different from the other kids. The rest of them were just normal and they like played sports, watched television, mm. played board games and stuff. And then there's Yona who is either playing music or reading books or speaking some fucking foreign language in third grade. So, Damn. <laughs> I definitely uh, was not doing that in third grade. So, you know, when, when Richard Grove says that uh, Yona is a super geek, it's true. I cannot imagine reading an entire encyclopedia. Like, that's that's some dedication. I mean, I was just like a Johnny Five robot at that age. Hmm. Need more data. Wow. Eating it up, eating it up. And then the best part of all was at the time, my dad was an adjunct associate professor, which means he taught courses uh, over 50 hours a week and made minimum wage. <laughs> what? Um, How does that work? Adjunct associate professor. Um, the only people that get paid less than that are like the... Uh, graduate students i was gonna say that that sounds like some sort of scam yeah um, well we are talking about a university campus and university and college in itself is a scam within a scam within a scam it's like the russian doll set um so anyways my dad was teaching on the faculty there at the speed scientific school teaching electrical engineering and calculus and a few other classes uh, they're at the main campus of the University of Louisville. Go Cardinals. Um, and it was really cool because, you know, like I got to meet Denny Crum and Daryl Griffith when they won the NCAA basketball championship in 1980. That was really cool. I got my picture with the team and stuff. <laughs> um, but that's because, you know, at least two or three times a month, there would be these faculty mixers where all of the University of Louisville uh, college faculty would get together and there would be hors d'oeuvres and, you know, like 
think of like that uh, Stanley Kubrick movie, uh, Drizzle, um, Eyes Wide Shut, you know, where everyone has to say Fidelio to get in the door. What the hell? Um, they were wearing masks and fucking capes and shit? Like animal yeah, masks? I, I, I can remember masks and capes at one of the parties. <laughs> Um, yes. Jesus. Um, just right out in the open. Yeah. Wow. Dude, this was this is back when Olivia Newton John was on the MTV. You know, let's get physical with the big leg warmers and stuff. And the- I I do actually remember that Think- part of the eighties. That was early eighties, wasn't it? 82, yeah. Eighty two, eighty three. Yeah, eighty two, eighty three. Yeah, like coming um, out of the uh, uh, allegedly the highly promiscuous 70s that's, i'm talking that's the like lore. Uh, before i was born even, 74 so i don't know I, I wasn't having sex until the 80s so this is like before you even knew who george michael was it was just oh called yeah wham oh, yeah. Was before, wham that was with before an exclamation madonna point. even yeah like madonna wasn't even a thing yet wake me up before you go go don't leave me hanging no, around like no. a Olivia, yo-yo. Olivia yeah. Newton John was way before that. Um, my father, but anyways, my father was a retard and would uh, often talk of his crush on Olivia Newton John in front of my mother. A lot of times, I actually remember that. I'm sure that it, she was fine with it. That was cool. The name of the movie was called Grease. There is a Grease. <clears throat> yep. Sandy. But, she was Sandy. That's right. Not Sandy from the block, although you're supposed to associate those two things. You're the they one that I want love. you to do that. <laughs> so the point being, it was in this Did you backdrop. realize that's why they, that's why they wanted yeah. uh, to call her Sandy? Uh-huh. AOC? It's because they wanted people to make that association. Nobody calls her Sandy. Sandy O from the Bronx. Yeah. Um, but it's a, against this backdrop of all this terrible 80s music. I keep going back and forth to my dad's faculty mixers and getting in these deep, deep, deep logic and history discussions with faculty, little seven eight, nine, ten-year-old Yona, you know, because hmm. dad was on the faculty there for about five years. And every chance I had to go to a faculty mixer, I went for the conversation. Uh, and, you know, never mind the fact I'm like in third grade, but I'm sitting here having these major fucking conversations, deep conversations with fucking two philosophy instructors and you know so I, that's that's why i really i'm so fucking mad i had to miss the fucking town hall i will not miss the next one because i love kicking it with tony and hearing tony's take on logic and the way he whips things into it mm-hmm. but it was in those conversations um that immediately from the youngest age, I could see how English in particular has got to be the most segregated language with different and entirely complete sets of professional jargons and terms so that the Mm -hmm. regular lay people, the hoi polloi, as it were, uh, you know, so that way that that way doctors can talk over their heads and lawyers can talk over right. their heads and engineers can talk over their heads because they're using all these special words. Yeah. That only they understand. Yeah. You know, salesmen uh, try to do it, too, but they're not yeah. that slick. Like that, and, and that's the, easy to figure out. And And so strangely enough. There's an emphasis in the English language that in order to appear smarter and more sophisticated, you need to be able to communicate with other people in such a way that there's no way they can understand what you're saying. Hmm. 
that it's a paradox in the English language that I'm really going to impress this audience by just saying a whole bunch of shit that nobody's going to understand. And then they're going to know I'm smart because no, <laughs> no what, one knows what actually what happens about. is everybody goes, what the <laughs> fuck did he say? Is that guy a retard? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we allowed to say that word? Still? It's so bizarre, you know, in 2023. Just, it, can I say I mean, retard? I, it's like, why? You know, and, and the, of course, there's the other extreme, too. You know, on the one hand, you got people trying to talk over your head. And so, you know, the main reason why I loved going to the faculty mix. Um, is because I don't know if it's so much the case today, but it certainly was then that anything to do with the French language was just considered high class. Hmm. Like, and so you, I would constantly hear people saying, "Oh, it has a certain je ne sais quoi and repentis of a play RSVP," yeah. <laughs> and you know. Um, a deja vu again really just going over the top with using as many french words as possible uh, now it was one particular thing that i noticed in their language and of course they got fondue and hors d'oeuvre plates and you know and calling it crudité instead of cut vegetables Again, it's, it's it's all about being pretentiously, snobbishly sophisticated. Right. Because look at all these Frenchy words that I'm using. Yeah. Which brings into the whole thing, why the fuck am I going there? Because it's not like the conversations were really that good with these stupid-ass professors, which I quickly figured out that I was, even at that age, was smarter than most of the professors I was talking to. Mm. Because they, they, they had no substance. They had no judgment. They it's bullshit artists. Uh, but the funny thing was, just about every one of them that would start to try to drop French words would just completely murder the French. Um, and so I would immediately correct their language. And so that's what was always fun. Hmm. You know, talking to, you know, the head of the fucking humanities department and he tries to say, uh, je ne sais quoi. I mean, you mean je ne sais quoi? Wow. <laughs> I said the, the, the S-A-I-S is pronounced say, not said. That's French. What department was he the head of? Humanities. No, seriously. Because <laughs> the whole thing is, you're trying to sound pretentiously sophisticated and super duper smart, and you're not even saying it right, bro. Right. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. terrible. And and then the other teachers are like, "Whoa, you just got corrected by a fucking six year old. That six year old speaks better French than you, <laughs> Mortimer." <laughs> well, dude, do you, Dad, it, do you know where's the next one? I want to come back and do this again. Hmm. Do you know that there was <laughs> stuff we did not get to last night? Like there was stuff that we left on the table. There oh, were yeah? links that got published with the episode Shit. last night that we never even covered because we just never got there. Like, did you know that uh, if if the Ukraine uh, suffers defeat at the hands of Russia that it's our fault. Oh yeah. 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 That's what Zelensky said. It's our fault. Well, not we just did, we didn't Zelensky, do enough. uh, our, our secretary of the treasury, uh, the yeah, one that, that does Yellen. the borrowing of the money from the federal reserve. Yeah. She went over and she was like, yeah, what he said, it's your fault, America. Well, the good news is we do have a strong enough economy that we can fight Russia and bomb the fuck out of Gaza and fight China. We're not all bombing Gaza. Time. We're not bombing Gaza. We're just arming Israel. Israel is the one bombing Gaza. 
They're using our bombs to bomb Gaza. Right. They're right. only using our radar. You know, we got that whole proxy thing down to a science. We don't even have to attack other nations anymore. We just so, get other nations to attack. So other they're nations. using American radar systems with American F-15s dropping American bombs, but it's the Israelis do it. To yeah. be fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's called diversity. <laughs> But that's great, you know, for those that survived the bombings in Palestine. There's all this English writing on the bombshells. You're learning more English. That's the language you're going to need to know when you're an immigrant in the United States later on. Hmm. Or China. Hey, Europe. Hey, Europe. Need some more Middle Eastern immigrants? <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. Well, apparently they're they're coming to the United States as well. Again, if you can believe anything that's in the media, they're just apparently they've been pouring across the borders for months now, months upon months. We're going on like it's like two years that people have just been pouring uh, over the borders now, right? Are we full yet? Let me tell you something. Have we gotten full? The problem with Texas is that they put hey now, the hey wall now, wait a minute. on the wrong border. Wait a minute. Ask anyone that's in Austin in Travis County, Texas, and they'll tell you what the problem with invaders in Texas is. They need to build a wall between New Mexico and Texas to yeah. keep the fucking Californians out. Because if so many goddamn Californians <laughs> come to Texas, they're He's ruining the place. Yeah, I, I, not I'm wrong. not making it up. I'm not. not it up. You're not. And check this out, man, because <laughs> the, the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, he announced this week that police, <laughs> just regular cops, right? Regular like San Antonio PD, uh, Houston PD, uh, Waco, like just regular cops all across Texas now will be able to arrest and detain illegal immigrants. So... All you people coming here from Modesto and Bakersfield, like you're put on notice. You are on notice now. That was perfect. That was absolutely wow. perfect. Yeah. Somebody wow. needs to clip that shit out. Because that's that's the kind of high value entertainment that you're yeah. only going to find right here Friday nights on open lines. We just Free flowing, free flowing. Isn't Texas one of the fastest growing states still in the country? Probably. It's staggering. I mean, I mean, well, you look What's at huge? Texas and Arizona it's too. Freaking massive. Have you ever driven and across Florida? Texas? Oh yeah, yes, yes, I have. Actually. Takes for fucking ever. I spent I mean, two days driving through Texas on my way to Mexico. I spent two days driving through Mexico to get to my destination. Texas is fucking massive. Yeah. And actually, you know, the, as long as it takes to drive from Texarkana to El Paso, taking an I-30 and I-20 and I-10, um, you know, cutting right through Midland, Odessa and all that shit, that, that's a slog. You know, that's like uh, about a 15-hour slog. But that's nothing compared to driving Amarillo to goddamn South Padre Island down there at Harlington Brown. Hmm. That's the fucking killer right there. I, I think that's about a 20-hour drive. Yeah. In, inside of one fucking state. I did. Uh, I, I don't hardly know any other state where you can drive for twenty hours and not leave the state unless you're driving in circles. Uh, California, if you're going north to south or south to north in California, you can yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. I did uh, at one time. We did when I was on the magazine crew. Uh, we were hopping from Los Angeles to San Antonio, and we always oh we we had a we had a, like a fleet of vans and some other vehicles right so we always drove city to city cuz we used the vans during the day to drop people off to go and sell magazines right 
We did straight up. We got, I think it was a 15 passenger Econo line van. There were like maybe eight of us in the van making the trip. We went straight from Los Angeles to San Antonio, only stopping for gas and to eat and use the bathroom. Just like switching out drivers. And it still took, I think, the better part of three days. Um, Because, like, we just, the the crew just took a whole week off and was like, we're just going to make this jump, get there when you get there. I think I looked at how long it would take for me to drive nonstop from my place here to go visit Death Tyrants. And we had a nice couple days off after we got there. That uh, That was cool. And he is up in British Columbia, Canada. Holy shit. Up above Seattle. And I'm down here in West Bacon, Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, where the three states meet. Uh, and it would take four days nonstop without, you know, ever sleeping. Yeah. Keep talking. I'm going to go get water. There, there's no way that I could pull that off. No way. <laughs> I was young. I was in my 20s. So it was easy. But then, you know, then I was like, well, it's so far. I think I would I would probably just take the train. And so I looked at, you know, well, do I just take Amtrak or do I take the bus to Canada and then take the via rail? What would be the best way to get there? And uh, it's outrageous. Like, Amtrak could get me there to Vancouver from uh, Huntington in like four and a half, five days. But it was eight days in Canada. And I'm like, my God, how does Canada manage to be worse than Amtrak? Jeez, right. When Amtrak is already the absolute worst, and the rail is. Even Let's go on for what thirty seconds. <laughs> We're already back on Amtrak. How do we get there? How do we get to Amtrak? Because I was talking about you know it's so far to drive from West Virginia to British Columbia. Oh Canada. man, I just realized. Then fuck it, I, I forgot to turn my camera on here. It was it was good on the live feed. Don't worry about. It. I just forgot to turn oh. it on in Zoom. So now you can see what everybody's seeing, which is basically your screen oh well i i had the feed pulled up on my desktop oh wow Got three screens and, you know oh that's crazy wow and eventually i'll have this uh new machine up and running once i get the uh graphics card repaired because it's got a busted fan on it set up and then we're out of way for sending that to me Nice. And speaking of which, there is another area there that has just absolutely exploded in population. Now, I'm speaking of what's affectionately referred to as the front range from Cheyenne to Pueblo, which include, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Boulder and Denver and all Aurora and all that other stuff. Columbine. Yeah. Um, I lived out there too. Uh, I got I got family down in uh, Pueblo County, not to be confused with Pueblo Town. Pueblo County being home to Colorado City and Manitou Springs, hmm. and uh, they ended up joining those two cities together. And Colorado City and Manitou Springs are now just simply known as. Colorado Springs. See what they did. That's where I was living. Um, in fact, the last time I was in Colorado Springs, Colorado, I wrote a song called Colorado Cuisine. It's when hmm. my mom got remarried. Uh in fact, let me see here. I'm just going to do the chorus to that. 
it's a kind of a long song, but the chorus where I'm talking about Colorado Springs. Yeah. Uh, might not hear the music so much, but it's it's about the lyrics. So let me see if I can remember this. Uh magic just a dream fine dining at the Broadmoor scene it was magic just a dream fine dining on that Colorado cuisine where the water runs like a mountain I'm standing at the base of the Rocky Mountains I had to fight and I had to fuss. Well, I made it to fight, speak, and I still went bust. Oh, yes. Yeah. All about Colorado. Nice. Like me. All that shit. Even Rose was digging it. I don't know if she's going to make an appearance tonight or not. She's just kind of hanging out right below the camera. Teasing everyone out there. Just being an absolute tease. Why not? Um, and, and, and you keep saying tease, so we'll do the second first. The Walmart tea. What? Oh, yeah. Because um, this song was originally just Colorado cuisine. And then the Rona happened. And so I wrote a second verse. Uh, and now the song is known by the second verse, which is Walmart T. Yeah. Right? Uh, so you just like repurposed it. Hey, hey, hey. Well, it, it's yeah. just uh, it updated the song. You know, it, it's just a continuation of the song. Because uh, now, you know, this poor fella that's got his college degree is not only um, working at fucking Mickey D's, he had to take a second job being a greeter in his Walmart team. So, let's see right. here. Joe Biden's uh, America. <laughs> Stop. talking to you too well, I got my GED now I work my job at the Mickey D's oh yes I got my college degree now the loan collectors won't stop calling me all day to get to sleep real hard working to jobs for the maximum wage they'll ever pay but i am free i must say not a domesticated human pet slave
Colorado. I remember that. Weed was legal back then. When was that? Colorado was the first. Yeah, they first. were the first, weren't they? They were the absolute first. I remember the first time I smoked some Colorado dispensary weed, and I was like, so underwhelmed. Hmm. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I expected it to be really good, and it was meh. No, it's government weed. Government weed is never good. Never. Government ruins everything it touches. Yep. Like, that should be the rule that people operate their lives by. For some reason, it's not, and I don't understand why. And did you happen to pick up or hear about, which I, I've never tuned in, I haven't watched any of the debates and this whole Republican thing, but... Why? One of the candidates I saw was clipped out. I saw it on Twitter, saw it on Telegram, and then Steve had it on the Sam Wake Up Show. Um, where literally was that Nimrod? Nimrod quotes Reagan. What saying we're from the government and we're uh, yeah, yeah. here to help? Yeah, saying that she's quoting Reagan. But when Reagan said that, Reagan said those are the 14 most feared words in the English language. Correct. I'm from the government. I'm here to help. Like, yeah. oh, my God. That's the know? last thing you want to hear, especially in a time of crisis. Crosses together. And, yeah. and yet, Nikki Haley is quoting it as if, well, that's what Reagan said. Reagan said, I'm from the government. That's because she's a dumbass. No, he said that's the worst thing you ever want to hear. I know, I know, yeah. but she's a dumbass because she's like, oh, I'm going to quote Reagan. Somebody fed that to her out of context. She decided that it sounded fucking great. Like, that's that's on point, man. That's right on message. Ooh, I, I got to my Yeah, put yeah. that in my speech. Fit it in somewhere. And don't She's ever call, ass. do not ever call Nimarata Rondawa Haley Nikki. Don't use aliases. Always call her by her real name. Yeah. Especially on the internet. God, how tone Total deaf world. do you got to be when you're like, you, you make everyone call you by an alias, Beto O'Rourke. <laughs> But then you're going to say, but you're not allowed to use aliases on the internet anymore. No more. So they don't want you to be anonymous in chat. They don't want you to have anonymous. Yeah, you're not allowed to be anonymous. There's no privacy. There's no anonymity. They nothing. can be anonymous. They can have multiple accounts under uh, pseudonyms. Yep. So they can do whatever the fuck they want. You... You need to be tracked and traced and databased because uh, there's consequences for getting out of line in society for most of us. Depends on who you know. I don't I don't know why anybody's watching these debates. I have no I, clue. I, what what what's it gonna do? I just can't anymore. I I just can't do it. Like the whole I mean, I said I'd never vote again and then you know, thanks to blunt force wisdom and, and teal and sugar bear and Rest of them, you know, I, I did sugar kids, you know, I did, uh, I did find the motivation to go to the polls to vote to make weed legal. Well, it's because you and were, it was involved something that you love, something you're yeah, passionate about. Passionate. Right. I mean, most people that have heard of the administration before, of the state should not be a passion for anybody, but you know, it shouldn't even exist. When they said 
you need to get out and vote because they're trying to make weeds legal in Ohio and it's close. And so we need people to go out and vote for the weeds. Well, now, again, I said I'd never vote again, but I'm high Yona. Smoke more of the weeds, Yona. Somebody tells me, vote for Yona. Will you vote for the weed? How the fuck would I not? Right. I mean, I, at this point, there's people all across the internet, all around the fucking world that I've engaged with. Maybe in English, maybe in some other language. Doesn't fucking matter. The Yona is internationally renowned yeah. as a goddamn stoner. Yeah. I got people coming at me all the time saying smoke more than weed. I don't even know who these fucking people are. <laughs> My reputation precedes me, man. Wow. So when somebody says you got to vote for the weed, wow. how could I not? Like, do you say that on like every every program you go <laughs> on? Smoke more of the weeds, or is that was that like mainly a Liberty Radio thing? Uh, that's just a Liberty Radio thing, huh? I mean, I, I do it in the chat all the time. Yeah. But, like, I never really did That's that true. on my That's you KRTV. do it in the chat all the time. I said do-do. I, I, I never did that in KRTD. I never did that on Lucky Burrito. Um, I mean, well, yeah, I smoke more of the weed, but, I mean, my main thing on the other shows was just the whole woo-hoo. Mm. Um. Whereas, get back up, get back harder, smoke more of the weeds. That's my Grand Theft World puns. Because to me, I, I associate that more with, with my, you know, with my pun game, my pun wheelhouse. This Grand Theft World is always making me push the very edge of wordsmithing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be challenging sometimes. Like but, I was uh, tonight, I was about to put up the post to let everybody know that we're going to be on the air for open lines, and you should call in for open lines. So you still have about ten minutes left, folks. Uh, and I was sitting there; I had uh, everything done, ready to go, and I needed a title for it. I really don't like that about the forum. That's like one thing I really don't like about the forum is that I feel like I have to give everything a title. And that's just more work. Like, that's that's more creative energy you have to expend. Discord was nice because it's just like, hey, we're on in five, here's the link, and you could be done with it. But no, now it's got that thing that, like, stares at you, that little blinking cursor. It says title behind it. I love, I love titles and band names and show names and episode names. That's my thing. But we compliment each other. Yeah, but, well, that's the thing, is usually I've already come up with something like that. And, like, that's already somewhere else in the copy. So this, this is, like, something extra that you have to do. Like, I forget, I forget what I did tonight, but it was supposed to be funny. I doubt anyone laughed at it. Well, I can already tell you, Get Back Harder, Episode 9, because it's Episode 9, which I think I had already mentioned before, we're going to go into, we're going into China, buddy. Yeah. Because, we're, we're, you know, in order to keep with the streak that we have going, the Yona has to stay at least a couple weeks, if not a couple months, end of the history right that's why i make my white phosphorus song about gaza being bombed to oblivion before october the 7th and so we're going to cover shang kai shek and mao zedong uh, all the way up to the current um onslaught and barrage of killer chinese weather balloons um mm. uh and that so educational and so you know i've got that remix and that song that we'll be able to use, the uh, Noin and Noin Luf Balloon Chinese uh, Snake Skin <laughs> <Ton and remix>. Mandarin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, remember the my, my Mandarin remix of 99 Love Balloon? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, but what are we going to do for the title? 
Ah, I got it. When the Shanghai check bounces. being attacked what what do you think is that too long of a title when the when the shanghai shek bounces oh probably not i've seen longer titles i I can drop the win and just say i i can just say the shanghai shek bounces the shanghai shek bounces there you go because i think when Taiwan goes to withdraw on its sovereignty account, when's that supposed to happen? They're, they're going to get hit with insufficient funds. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Could be. And the ATM gives you Could back be. your card. You get your card back in your hand from the ATM machine, and you got a receipt. And nothing. You get nothing. It's zero yeah. zilts. You're still broke. Ha 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 ha. All right, well, before we run out of time, uh, we do have, I wanted to save it for late in the show because we do have an obligation to do a Liberty Radio public service announcement. Stop that. It is a value for value program for the donationally inclined. There are ways to give and keep giving. Uh, Liberty Radio public service announcements are always for the benefit of the public, never for the benefit of Liberty Radio. That's how that all works. Uh, value for value. Yeah. Like Kiona was saying. Uh, for those that were not aware of it and were maybe uh, planning to start new projects or uh, something like that in December, uh, bear in mind that Mercury is set to be in retrograde motion from December 13th until January 1st. Uh, so you might just want to hold oh off God. on that a little bit. Oh, my God. And there's a major snowstorm and blizzard coming at the same fucking time. Really? Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't know how that works. I just know with like uh, business ventures and stuff like that, they're like, yeah, you don't, you don't want to do that when yeah. Mercury's acting all funky. I don't know if I want Jack Frost crashing on the couch for the first time this winter while the Mercury retrograde festival's going on. Yeah. Well, shit. Uh, Fido told me that, uh, what is it? I think Sunday night or something down here, they're forecasting the lows to be in the 20s. Uh huh. She That's was right. like, she was upset. She was like, I gotta go out and like wrap the pipes and shit. This is Texas, man. It's not supposed to snow in Texas. That's so bizarre. What the fuck's going on with this shit? But to be fair, it used to snow all over. Oh, it used to snow all over Nevada. Believe it or not, and that's how Nevada got its name because Nevada. Mm-hmm. Is the Spanish word for covered with snow. Yeah. Nieves. Nieves is snow. Well, the last time I was in Vegas, it was snowing. So it was well, there you go. January of 97, 98, something like that. Yeah. As we were leaving, it was snowing. I can't believe they date that town after one of the shittiest cars that was ever made. The Vegas, yeah, yeah. We we, we owned a Vegas, really, and and it was a total shit box. Mm. And it was supposed to be an upgrade from the Studebaker that we were driving before that had the wood paneling and shit in it. But no, it was way worse. Vega was a death trap. I mean, only thing worse than a Vega was the fucking Pinto. Just, just flick the flick the back bumper of a of a pinto and a motherfucker blow up. You know <laughs> like that house in Arlington. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, dude. Oh, wow, have you been dude. have you been following that? Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Absolutely. That's not crazy. the first time. There was a house that well, a couple of houses that all blew up in San Bruno, California from a, a, a gas pipe uh gas leak. Well, there there is something else going on here. There has to be. When you start looking at the dude's, uh, his own history, and then you look at, like, his father and his mother, 
And the fact that it's in Arlington, it's like, uh, yeah, there's some shady shit going on here. Why are they letting us see this? What's going on? Uh, and for folks following along on the radio, don't get it confused. You will see our LinkedIn post on our LinkedIn. I mean, our LinkedIn, our LinkedIn post on our LinkedIn. We don't have that. Because we do LinkedIn. No, we no. don't. No. No, they're assholes. Fuck them. <laughs> Never. I think I had, I think I had a LinkedIn account for like six months when I was working in insurance. And I was just like, this what is stupid. Way. Why would I do this? LinkedIn was kind of like MySpace for, but just supposed to be just like a Rolodex for business. Yeah. Never, it was supposed really, to never, be like a, like a giant professional network. And never took off. Nobody. It's because it was all, uh, everybody operated through nepotism still. Like it was yeah. still, they were doing all the same shit on LinkedIn that they did in the real world where it was still like, if you didn't know the right people, you were still fucked. Yeah. So what's the point? Well, it's my opinion. And that's why when I sat down for the first time, after having read the book, Tragedy and Hope, and I found uh, a, a recorded interview of Carol Quigley being asked, why did you call it Tragedy and Hope? My wife is curious. Why did you call it that? And, of course, that's when Carol Quigley is like, you know, well, I, I, I used to have hope in Western civilization. But uh, not anymore. We're fucked. Yep. I, I, I'm paraphrasing. I'm, it's not literally, but I, th I think he said we're finished. We're just finished, or something. But you know, yeah, he's yeah, he basically saying we're fucked. Yep. Um, and so I was like, "Up oh, there's my sample." You know what? I'm just going to repeat this through the whole goddamn song because I mean that that that's it. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. And pretty much the whole song, you just keep saying we're fucked. We're finished. It really it's ties over. the song together. <laughs> I used to have hope for Western civilization, but not anymore. <laughs> now I realize we're going back to the Middle Ages, buddy. We're going back to the Dark Ages. Fuck your Looks enlightenment. Like it. Fuck Looks your like Magna it. Carta. All right, two-minute warning. <laughs> it's actually more Who than two said. minutes right now, but I figured I'd give the two-minute warning early. I don't know if I've given any book reading recommendations, but since I talked so much about bookie book stuff in this episode of uh, Friday and Call Friday Call and Show. Man, I can't talk. <laughs> sure, that's good enough. Whatever. The uh the book that I recommend is a Carol Quigley tome called The Anglo American Spirit. How long is that one? I don't think I've read that one yet. Pretty short. Maybe I have about read that one. About 167 pages. Maybe I did read that one. It's fire. No, 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 no. I read History of Civilization. That's what I read. That's I the that one he the had to write. Yeah, History of Civilization. That's the one he had to write three different times. Yeah. Because the publisher kept fucking with him on. Yeah. I started reading, uh, what is it, Weapon Systems and Political Stability. Uh, and then I like a couple pages in or well, not a couple of pages. I've gone through like all the forward stuff and all of the dedications and all that bullshit. Um, I was just about to start getting into it and I was like, oh, this is a thousand pages. Maybe I shouldn't start reading this right now. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize it was that long. I thought it was shorter. Because like I've read uh, some stuff from Adorno that's like. A, a difficult read to get through but it's not incredibly long it just takes you a long time to get through it because it's it's dense in its denseness like he's he's really good at, at weaving the, the logical fallacies to making now them see, look logical 
that was my only drawback about reading. I've never been a binge reader. I can only take so much. I, I don't know that I've ever sat down and read for more than two hours at a time. I have to get up and go do something else. Uh, and then it's fresh when I get back to it. I just, I, I burn out. I can't, I can't just sit there and read for hours and hours. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Doc says, 